Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Charles. Today we have our final story of the week. And it's a tale that we've told before. We haven't had one of those in a while, but I like this story. It's it's quite an interesting tale out of Castle Sunak. This is The Blind Archer. In his stronghold at Sunak, Siebold, one of the most rapscacious of the robber barons, presided over a godless revel. Wanton women with showy apparel and painted cheeks lolled in the arms of tipsy cavaliers. The music blared, and to complete their carousal, wine flowed freely. The lord of Sunak, flushed with drinking and leering on the assembly with evil-looking eyes, he spoke as follows. Noble ladies, drunken applause from his worthy associates, and much-married nobles, loudly giggled the shameless females. After food and drink, I, as your host, will be pleased to entertain you by bringing you a ferocious animal which I keep confined here. While the ladies pretended to take shelter timidly behind their lords, and the men stared at their host, expecting some further explanation, the doors of the room opened, and led by two servants, a man in coarse garments and with unkempt hair and beard stood before them. The suppressed whisper passed round the festive board, and all eyes were fixed on the haggard countenance of the prisoner. When, for a moment, the weary eyelids were raised, two ghastly cavities were visible. Again, with the same tone of levity, the lord of the castle spoke. Lovely ladies and knightly companions, the best marksman on the Rhine was Hans Veit of Furstenneck. Like ourselves, he was dreaded far and near. He and I entered on a feud of life and death. He went down. With broken brand and battered shield, bleeding from numerous wounds, I lay prostrate before you, awaiting manfully the death thrust, murmured the prisoner, and his voice sounded as if from the grave. It pained me to finish him off, said Siebold flippantly. I got his two eyes taken out, and thus added to my collection of rarities the best archer on the Rhine. My murdered eyes behold your scorn, said the prisoner harshly. But surely chivalry still flourishes on Sunek, said the lord of the castle. Understand, then, that my servants have informed me that even blind you can, guided only by sounds, hit a given mark with the bolts. If you come out of this ordeal successful, freedom shall be the reward. Stormy applause greeted these words. Death went nearer to me than life, murmured the blind archer. As he seized the crossbow, however, a gleam of joy went over his countenance like a ray of sunshine over a somber landscape. Crowded together in a corner of the room, the guests watched the proceedings. The lord of Sunek seized a goblet and ordered the prisoner to draw upon it after hearing the sound. In the next moment, the silver clang resounded as the goblet fell on the floor. Shoot now, said Siebold of Sunek and immediately an arrow pierced his mouth. With a grunt like a slaughtered ox, Siebold sank among the rushes. Silent and motionless, with the two eye cavities gaping, stood the blind man. Then his shaggy head sank on his heaving breast. Like a flock of frightened crows, the knights and their paramours fled, and only a few terrified squires and servants muttered prayers over the body of the Lord of Sunak. And that is the story of the Blind Archer, one of my favorite stories of revenge, because, honestly, what did Siebold expect to happen? Did he expect that the archer would truly draw on the goblet and not take his opportunity for revenge? I mean, I saw it coming, and I'm sure you did as well. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com 
where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we'll be back with three new stories from Legends of the Rhine. As always, thank you so much for listening.